it's a clinical performance in the end, Wayne. I mean, this is a team that's on the rise by all reports over the last two to three years. We hadn't seen as much of it in 2020. But it's a star-driven competition, and they led the way tonight. And the star of the show is with Mark Refuto. Clayton, that has to be one of the best games you've ever played. Well done. Yeah, good win, good win by the boys. Um, glad to get the wins back on the board, and um, hopefully we can keep going from here. What a goodie sat, three-quarter time at work. You kicked seven in the last. It was a huge finish. Yeah, no, you just said, uh, just keep back, uh, back at our fundamentals, our basics, and uh, stay with that, and that's what we did. Back ourselves in. What about all week? It would have been a tough week after last week's performance. Was he positive, Goody, or did he give it to you a bit after last week's game? No, nah, it was a real positive attitude from Goody. Uh, he was getting around this, um, looking after us. Sort of put it, put it in the past and focus on the next uh, ten games a year. And I uh, focus on that. Well, good luck on Sunday against North Melbourne. Appreciate it. Well, you were praising him early. You saw it coming, Kingy. You read exactly what he was doing early, and he parlayed that into one of the great games of the year. Well, fundamentally, every player is trying to be a better version of themselves every year, Dwayne. And I just think Clayton Oliver's got the contested possession game covered. His ability to get hands on ball is as good as anyone in the competition. The, the next phase of ensuring that his possession ends up on the scoreboard, I think we saw tonight. He's burst from stoppage. He, he put his head down. He took five quick steps every time he got the ball. And that become taking the inside game to the outside game. And that's where the damage comes. And I think Melbourne are a different team if they can get Petrarca, Oliver and Viney in that frame of mind. So as we can see there, there'll be a lot of teams at the end of this round that will have 10 games next to their name. Melbourne and Essendon by the end of this round will only have nine games next to their name. North Melbourne next, who are below them on the ladder now. So their destiny is in their own hands in a way. Yeah, and that's the way you want it. I mean, it, nothing's given to you in AFL football. You've got to go and win games. You've got to go and create your own history. And that's what these guys are trying to do. There's, there's adversity around the corner for every AFL club. They've been through it early in this season and last. So they've got some work to do. They know that. But I just thought the effort of Oliver, Petrarca, Viney, and even Gorn didn't have his best night tonight. But he was, he was out there and competing for his team. And that's what the leaders need to do. Adelaide, Adelaide Crows, no need to tell you, Crow fans, still winless in 2020 after a 10th loss in a row. And it's now continuing this losing streak, 13 games in a row now, You're including guilty. the three to end last season. But it's all about Melbourne right now. Simon Goodwin, much needed win against the team that he was a star with in a couple of premierships. His fourth season as Melbourne coach, ninth, fourth, 17th. And now maybe the slow climb back. Great to see the emotion. Melbourne, very happy to get the four points. 13, 10, 88 to 5, 7, 37. A 51 point win in the end, Eddie. Yeah, very much so, Dwayne. Good win in the end. They were 12 points up at half time, though. They're four points up at quarter time. Doom, uh, uh, sorry, four points at quarter time, five at half time, 12 at three quarter time, and then 51 points. They needed to have an emphatic win. They got it, Melbourne. Well, they got it through their players that they wanted to step up to the plate and play well. We saw Oliver play one of the best games of any individual we've seen all this year. But in doing so, he played team football as well. We saw two young key forwards do what was asked of them. We saw two key backmen that they have at the club as well. In the last couple of years, they've contracted those players. They took care of their job as well. They were fantastic after quarter time. Melbourne started to roll into their game. As the game went deeper,
Melbourne got more and more of what they wanted. David King, if Melbourne are going to be a side, the man who's going to lead them there, Clayton Oliver, put on a clinic tonight. Dermot said every good team needs a great redhead. And he was fantastic tonight. Just have a look at his want to step through traffic. This is the shift. We've seen him get a heap of footy. He gets 30 a week. But tonight it was 30 with power and with damage. And that, I think if he can take the ball from inside the contest to out. Look at this one. Bang. This is great. Gone. And then he, he's got a good kick on him. I really think he's got skills that he hasn't shown us yet. And that sounds ridiculous because he's been an All-Australian and a best and fairest winner already. That's when he, look at these wheels, Kingy. Yeah, he's got them. I know, I, I know he's got them. We just don't see them often enough. I know, 12 clearances tonight, but he stepped out with them in. I think they're a different team total. Totally, if Petrarca, Viney and Oliver think like that. But th they are three gun players. Mm. And, and I just thought, I, I mentioned a couple of times in the call, Viney just looks so fit. Looks like he's dropped a bit of the, you know, the hard yes. at it type of stuff. Doesn't mean he's not going hard, harder at the ball, but just, yep. just the upper chest and things. He just looks a bit leaner well, and looks so much more athletic and he's getting off the mark so quick. still powerful enough. Oh, he, he could afford to drop two, three, four kilos yeah. and still be a bull. There's, there's one thing, Ed, there's one thing that's that's missing in Oliver's game. And can I just show, if this is Patrick Dangerfield, he's having a shot at goal here. So the hit comes, he's out and gone. Now, if he just pins the ears back like he did in those first three or four occasions, he's stepping to 50, 55, and he's going for home. Or he's at worst creating an option for the man on his right-hand side there. So I just think there's still, you know, the first five steps of, of coming to his game tonight, if he can get that really adventurous one, 10, 15 strides, away you go. Or punch it nice and low into the chest of the player leading. the forwards. <laughs>